Hi, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be preparing to make a sheep delivery and then take a trip down to the farm where the sheep are going in the Finger Lakes. Normally, I have people come out to the farm to pick the sheep up because I like them to see how our setup is and just give them a chance to see an established farm and what our practices are. But this particular delivery is a woman who I've known for many years and she's been sh raising sheep. She actually has a beautiful Icelandic flock as well as a Shetland flock and another um, breed of sheep we're going to learn about called leader sheep. So she's already got her system and I've always just really wanted to visit her farm. She lives in a beautiful part of New York State. It's called the Finger Lakes and when you look at the map you can sort of get a feel for why they're called the Finger Lakes. What I have to do this morning is I have to isolate the three ewes that are going to be moving on and then the balance of the flock is going to be going out to the far pasture. I'm going to isolate those three ewes because I'm not going to be leaving for a couple hours and if I let them go way out there I'll never be able to get them back in. So they're just going to stay in the barn, have some hay and relax until it's time to go. I'm going to be using a dog crate. So there's, these are three adult ewes. I actually have a Great Dane crate that I can use for the three girls. A lot of times if I'm moving lambs or just two sheep I can use my Labrador crate. So yeah, I'm just going to put the dog crate in the back of the van with a tarp down on the floor of the van and they'll travel nice and safe. It'll be nice for them because if I go in the truck, it's kind of cold for them to be in the back of the pickup truck. We don't have a cover on it. So that's the plan. Um, before I get into the video, I just want to introduce myself quickly. My name is Jennifer Johnson. My husband and I have a beautiful flock of Shetland sheep that we raise for their wool. And um, this channel is all about living on a farm, raising sheep for their wool, farm life, you know, information about sheep, about spinning wool, and about the tools and equipment that I use to make yarn. The first thing I have to do is get all of the ewes in one of the sections. So our barn is divided up into three sections and it's just easier if I'm trying to catch individual sheep to have a smaller pack. So we'll try and do that. All right, so they're all in here, nice and compact. So we gotta get three ewes. There's Brienne, who was right there with the sugar lips, and Nita, who I need to look up her number because I'm not 100% sure who Nita is. It might be that one there with the yellow ear tag. And then you, you're leaving. You're going away. You're gonna go to a new home. They're gonna love you so much. Right? Morning. Morning. All right, we gotta get to work. I don't have time for lovies. No lovies time. I'm serious. No more. We gotta work. We got stuff to do. Get free in first. No, you're going there. Can't see. I have my whole flock on Google Sheets. All right, so I need the ear tag number for Nita. 1330, and it's a yellow tag. What did I say, 1330? All right, where are you? There you are, right there. Hi. Here you are. Get the She's a little bit high-spirited. Okay. Okay. 
So, I got the three um, ewes that are leaving. They're all isolated in this section of the barn. So I'll throw them some hay and everybody else can go out on the pasture. A little bit change. It's a change in their routines, but I don't care for it. So you're gonna let me know. Double time. I've said before, there's a few too many youth here on the farm. So this will help a lot with the situation we have here with the overcrowding. I want to get to 55 youth. Okay. There you go. There you go. All's good now, right? All right, so they'll settle down. It's good, isn't it? All right, let's go finish up my chores. Then I gotta go in the house and write my contract up. I do a sales contract every time I move sheep off the farm. So I'm gonna take care of that. Doesn't look like it's cold out. It's what, it's October 21st. But I've broken out the Carhartts. So this is my um, winter gear. Absolutely love it. It's got the coveralls, the jacket. I always feel like I'm in a coat of armor. <laughs> so it's chilly, it's breezy, my hands are cold. So that time of year. Brienne has a lamb out there which by now they should be, she's probably, she definitely doesn't need her mother's milk, but every so often she sneaks some. So that's what that little bit of stress is. Perdita, I don't think she, um, well, she obviously wasn't bred. She was a lamb last year, so she's going to be fine. And then Nita, I think she had a ram that we've already sold. So, so Brienne might be, I'm going to advise Margaret, that's the lady that's buying them, that she was still nursing to watch it, but it'll be fine. She'll dry up really quick. So now all I have to do, I'm still moving the rams, you know, and taking their paddocks and shifting them on the fresh grass. Probably do that for another week. We're going to get a hard frost and that'll kill all the grass, the nutritional value. So then they'll be 100% on hay. But while I can, I'm shifting them still. So we got to do that.
checking on you guys. Who's squawking? That's Brienne. That's Nita. I knew it was gonna be you. And this is Perdita. Nita, I've got Bumbly yarn in my shop right now from her. And Brienne, I think I sold her fleece. And same with Perdita, I sold half of her fleece, the other half I spun. It's lovely. So the place they're going is also a fiber farm. She's a spinner and raises her sheep for fiber. So it's <laughs> be a good, uh, good acquisition for her. Hey, hon. So I'm gonna go in the house now and do the paperwork. I also have to pull their registration certificates because I'm just gonna pass those on to her. So I'm gonna go do that now. So I'm down here in my office, which is actually the basement of our house. And again, sorry to my <laughs> more regular viewers, but I feel like I need to sort of explain a couple things to new subscribers. And that is that this basement is really dark and kind of cluttery. I call it the wool cave. And um, it's just, this is where all the work happens, where I fulfill orders, I make stuff, I record videos down here. That's normally where I try to get it to look a little bit nicer for some of my more <coughs> attempts at being professional. So anyway, so now I'm down here. I also have a couple orders this morning I have to ship before I leave, but I want to get the contract together. I got to get the registration paperwork pulled and get that all set up. All right, so right here by my desk is my file, and each folder is a different sheep. Some of my regular viewers already know this, so I just pulled out Nita's file. Now I need um, Perdita, 1439. So it's organized by year. So this is 2021 sheep. What did I say? 1420? 1439, my goodness. She's hiding behind Rosalind. There she is. And I need um, bringing up parts. So each year it gets smaller and smaller as we shift our flock one direction or another. In. And the files are thicker as the end of the year because I put stuff like fiber samples that we collect and stuff in there. It's a lot of organizing. Normally today is the day that I um, do a live feed. So I have a Facebook farm page, which I'll put a link on it in this video. And every Friday at noon, not every Friday, but I try to do it on Fridays at noon. I try to do it regularly. Lately, I haven't had much success because the sheep are on the far out pasture and they don't come in. But in the winter, it's really nice because they're always right there saying hello to us. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I'm not doing that today because I am making this delivery. So what I need to do is pull out of each of these folders the registration paperwork. But I'm just going to give you, for example, this is Nita's folder. So in Nita's folder, she's got a bag with one of her samples from last year. So this would be when we send the sample to the lab, that's really nice, to get it micron tested, they send the samples back. I ask them to, I give them a stamped, I pay the extra postage, I guess, to have them send it back to me so that I have the record. And I say this, maybe this year I'll do it, but... One thing I want to do is go back to some of my older folders of sheep that have either passed on or sold or whatever and take those samples and make something with them. <laughs> That'd be really fun. I make these cards up every year when I'm doing my fleece evaluation. So their fleece information, put that particular fleece on that side. It says here I was going to sell it, but I know I didn't. I kept it and I processed it myself. She's got an average fiber, spinning fineness of 20.4. So this seed was going to really be great. Here's a printed copy of her pedigree. It goes back five generations. 
But this is the one I'm actually going to give to Margaret when I get to her farm. And on the back is where you sign, indicating that, yep, you're transferring that sheep. And then Margaret will send this in to get it documented that she owns the U now. We got a sample here from 2019. I don't know why, but I have a picture of her. <laughs> this was like when I used to say it was really good. I still need to take pictures of my lambs this year. And then another one from the prior year. So a lot of fiber samples, which I think would be really fun to wash them up and make something with them. So that's that's what I need to do. So here's Brienne's paper, her certificate. Our registry is in Kansas. It's where we send all the paperwork to get it transferred, so they manage that for us. All right. And then this I'm going to put in my sheep that have moved on to the, off the farm to somewhere else. I'll take care of that later. All right, so that's the paperwork that I need. So with that, I am ready to go. So I'm just going to ship some orders and then hit the road. I'm looking forward to seeing this farm. Margaret's really great. She's been you know, she's been doing this the same amount of time as we have, if not longer. And I always learn something from Margaret. She does fiber festivals too. She's got a really nice booth. She does a lot of stuff. But I'll we'll see. I'll share her information if you're interested in really nice Icelandic. She's one of the premier Icelandic breeders here in the States. Now I gotta drive down to the barn and load up the crate that we use to move sheep with. Rich is on his way home from Buffalo. So he's actually going to join me today. We'll have a nice drive down to Ithaca. Just driving right down. <laughs> and everybody always <clears throat> asks me, you know, can I put the sheep in the back of the car? I've got an SUV. And you can. You can, you know, you're going to need to put um, halters on them. It's not a good idea. Just get yourself a Labrador Sorry, I don't mean to sound impatient, but I've said this about a million times to people. Get a Labrador-sized dog crate. You will easily be able to move three and maybe four sheep in it, in the back of your vehicle. And I like putting them in the van because it's windy and they don't like it when they're, you know, like in the back of the pickup truck or whatever. And yes, we could use the trailer, but that's kind of overkill for the number of sheep I'm moving here, so. Three use back of the van, dog crate, and a tarp underneath to catch all the poop and pee. All right, let's go. Oh, there it is, right up front. And it doesn't even have a bottom tray, which really doesn't matter. This might actually be a, a Great Dane crate. But you get the idea.
now I'm gonna wait for Rich. And then we're gonna hit the road. Oh, I love the sheep, of course. <laughs> A little squished. There's plenty of space up in the front once we get moving. I'll be a little more generous with the space. It's okay. When we arrived at Margaret's, we immediately unloaded the ewes and put halters on them. And then each of us led a ewe to this cozy little enclosure where they're going to be staying until breeding season begins. As you can see, it doesn't take them very long to get comfortable with their new surroundings. These are my guys and weathers. Okay. The Morit one is a weather because he was a runt. And that black guy in the middle is a weather because... He has wonky horns and a wonky attitude. Oh, okay. This is the badger that I was telling you about. And if you look at his back, it's not quite as obvious as it is when you shear him, but he's got that cape, right? Yep, oh, you can see it, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. All right, so are these Icelandics? No, these are Shetlands. These are Shetlands. These okay. are all Shetlands here. Okay. And then these are my Shetland and Icelandic ram lambs. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> I'm not sure how his horns are going to work out. That's Shetland and this guy, he's obviously spotted <laughs> from his face. He's got white on his face, but I think he's going to even out. Oh, okay. More or less to a gray. Oh yeah. Is that pan nice? Don't think it, they don't get tangled up or anything with the halters. No. Good. These gardens are all being fed by sheep poop. Which explains why.
they all know which ways to go. <laughs> Clever girls. All right, so I want to ask you, I know for a while you were selecting for leader sheep. What does that mean exactly? That's a separate breed of sheep that's from Iceland. Oh. I thought it was a particular behavior. Although well, they, they have a particular behavior, okay. um, which is one of the main things that separates them. So they're not a subset of Icelandic, they're a totally separate they're, breed? They ha yeah, they, they were designated in 2019 as a separate breed. Okay, do you have any? any yes. More? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I've been upbreeding since 2009, and so I have three ewe lambs now that are 97%. Oh, okay. I gotcha. And they look pretty much the same. It's just, I mean, how would you distinguish a leader from They're an Icelandic? Um, for the person who is casually looking at them, it would be really hard to yeah. tell. Okay. But they are taller and thinner. They're they're more like a milk breed in terms of their um, in terms of their conformation. Okay. Um, but they tend to be more alert. Um, they're ones that you'll see watch, you know, looking around. And um, they get really mouthy if bad weather's coming in, <laughs> stuff like that. If there's something amiss, I mean, I what I often do is put the ewe lambs out here in one of these shelters for the you know for their yearling year, um, and I've had them you know uh, 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 one of the sheep be in trouble out there for you know, in the fence or something, and the leader will come back. No kidding. And pester. So it's yeah. almost like having your own a guard dog, kind of, right? Kind of, except that they're sheep, so. Right. They're, yeah. So I'm gonna go in here. And you're gonna wanna remember that, Margaret, an orange coat, that's the size, decide to start. I color code them by size. Okay. And it's based on the length. Okay. So what do they, what, are, what do they start off with? They start off, he's got sizes for like that one. Okay. They're blue and black. Okay, I'm, I'm rooting this down. And then, um, she's also in it. So, how do you keep them from felting? They just don't, I don't do anything. I keep the coat size correct. Because that's one of the reasons why I don't, don't yeah, coat the Icelandic because because they will sell. So. They will because you got more tips, you know. Yeah. Okay. Whereas these guys don't have as much tip, so it's Hold a very on. it is going to be a blunt tip. Mm -hmm. But I don't have anybody complaining about that. Look at her. <laughs> yes, she's in here. After we got Margaret's new ewe settled in, we decided to take a walk out to the back pasture. This is where she keeps her Icelandic ewes and the leader sheep. And these two sheep here are very good examples of her leader sheep with their sharp, intelligent faces and elegant frames. And this black ewe with the white blaze is a typical example of a leader sheep marking. Icelandic fleeces come in two parts. The tog is the long hair overcoat and the fuzz downy undercoat. Commercial preps will combine the two, but hand spinners working from a fleece can separate them and enjoy the soft wool of the fell for next to skin softness. Margaret has around 70 sheep and she knows all of their names. Farm visits are always so enjoyable and there's always something to learn. I recommend them highly, especially if you're considering bringing animals onto your property. Thank you so much for joining us on this lovely farm visit with an equally lovely shepherdess.